Hey friends, hi, welcome to my channel if you are new. A lot of you are watching regularly and you come back every single day, um, but for those of you who like sought this video out specifically, welcome, and I hope you enjoy this video. For my regular followers and for my new followers, go ahead and make sure you're subscribed. I've actually wondered that because I do wonder how many of you are actually subscribed or if you just watch every single day. Okay, so what are we gonna do today? We're gonna make a video for you. I'm gonna show you guys how to make your own videos. Now, why am I doing that? If you, listen, if you watched yesterday's video, you'll know that I had this idea from one of you. You didn't know that you gave me this idea, but you want to make videos of some past trips that you have gone on and prepare yourself to be able to do a video for future trips that are coming up. And I know, I absolutely know how intimidating that can be, but I guarantee you it's easier than you think. So let me give you kind of the few things that you need to make sure that you can do this, at least the way I know how to do it. It's the only way I can show you how is the way I know how to do it. Um, and then I think, I think, think, think you'll be able to do this. Here's what you need. Your phone. You don't need a fancy camera. We all know how expensive this camera is. Use it. But let me give you tips in just a second on how to use this. Then you need iMovie. That's the one I use. It's the only one I know how to use. And I know with all of this stuff going on on the screen, it's pretty intimidating, but I'm gonna break it down for you so that you don't get too overwhelmed with it. That's kind of all you need. You need your videos and your photos that you've taken on your phone, and you need iMovie, okay? Obviously you need cord to connect and get your photos to your computer, um, but you can also airdrop them to your computer as well. Let's talk about your videos when you make them on your phone. If you've already done them, just don't worry about it. It is what it is. You took the photos in the, in the format that you took them in, likely this way, because that's all you know. Most people take their videos going this direction. Most people take their photos going this direction. It is what it is. If you're editing videos from the past, that's totally fine. You still wanna be able to capture it and keep the memory so it is what it is. If you're doing this going forward with the thought process to do this going forward, turn your phone this way and start doing your videos especially in this format because that's the format that will fill any screen. It'll fill your phone screen when you turn it sideways to watch it. And it'll fill a computer screen if you happen to be watching YouTube from your computer screen. It's also going to fill, it, fill the screen when you watch it from your TV if you end up watching it on your own TV and showing family and friends if you end up making a video, which I guarantee you if you go to the time and effort to make a video, you're gonna wanna share, share it with your friends and your family. When you turn it onto video, if you're filming something, give it a second and then film it. And then, you know what I mean? Like, it's okay to have a, a, a gap at the beginning before maybe you're gonna talk about something that you're seeing right in front of you. If you wanna talk while you're filming it, that's just fine. If you are at a volcano, say you're at Haleakala on Maui, because obviously we love all things Hawaii, then, you know, start the video, hit play, give it a second, make sure you're filming, make sure you're recording, and then you can talk. Now, I said this in yesterday's video, and, and I want this is the thing that I wanna talk about. You don't have to do it vlogger style. I get in front of the camera and I hold, obviously it's not my phone, I have my camera here, but I'm, I have the camera in front of my face and I'm talking to it, right? You don't have to do that. It's kind of intimidating to do in public, I'm not gonna lie. It's even intimidating to do it here in my own room, in my own house, because people can see me sometimes. <laughs> you don't have to talk to your camera like this. It's fine, it makes it personal, but you can turn it this way and still talk and explain what you're seeing, or your kids, or your grandkids, or whatever. You can still talk and capture your voice explaining what it is. But you also don't have to do that. If you just have to quickly pull out your camera, film a beautiful scene, or your kids are doing something spontaneous, you don't have time to explain what they're doing, that's fine too. Or it's from the past and you don't have an explanation of what it is, that's fine. I'm gonna show you what to do in those cases. If you really wanna explain what you filmed, there's ways to do that in here. Either you've got your videos from the past or you've got them from current, you're going to make them going forward for a trip or for whatever reason. If you're doing it from your phone, 
So you can either connect it to your computer and then you've got your iMovie open. All right, ignore the picture of the plane in the background. It's left over from a video that I'm currently working on. Here is what iMovie looks like. I have two libraries opened up, um, a Big Island one from our trip this year and uh, my review video library that I'm creating. But you want to create a new one. You won't have one in here. So if you go up to File and Open Library, you're gonna create a new one. Now, for the most part, when you open up iMovie for the first time, you're gonna have a library already opened up but just in case you don't, go ahead and do that. Um, and you can name it anything you want, but I have mine saving to my external hard drive. You can save yours to your regular desktop or to any other external drive you happen to have. I'm just gonna do this to my external because that's where I save all of my data to. All right, so you see right here where it says iMovie Today, I, it automatically opened up a little file with today's date, and that's what yours is gonna do, and that's totally fine. So, there's nothing in that file as of right now. So you need to get your videos into iMovie. So if you um, have like iPhoto, and you have them on your phone, and you have everything connected to your phone, you should be able to have an option here in the drop-down pile for iPhoto to be able to get your photos. Like if you can kind of see it's populating down here with the photos that would currently be on my computer, it's being really slow. But you can also select ones from your desktop. So if you dumped your photos onto your desktop, they might be, right, you could select desktop and then find the file. If you have airdropped them, they could possibly be in your downloads. So no matter where you saved your photos, that's where you're gonna go and pull those photos from. I tend to airdrop my photos from my phone. It's the easiest thing for me to do. So if you, if you open up your photos, say I want to send this photo or video, whichever one it's gonna be, you just click on the little um, square with an arrow and you choose airdrop and, that, and then you can choose your computer to airdrop that video too. So you can drop them to your computer. Most likely they're going to go to your downloads, then go into the file and downloads and select the videos or photos that you want, and then they're going to be in your computer. Honestly, that's kind of the hardest part is being able to like access your videos or photos. So once you import, so what, you're, what you did before, let me show you right here. So see how it says import here? You wanna import media, and then that's when you go and select the files that you want to select. My computer's really slow, which is why I don't use this one anymore. So you select the photos and they drop in here, or videos, and they drop in. I obviously have a ton, because this is from our trip to the Big Island this year. So they all show up right here. All right, we just barely worked on the media. So this little button up here says media. That's what we were working on. We were getting your media put into whatever file you imported from and, and created here on the side. Now, we need to create a project. It's this little tabby button right at the top. Click on project. These are all of my projects. These are all the videos that I have created. You're going to click on create new. And you're gonna click on movie. And then you can save it to whatever library. Mine is saved to Big Island. Yours would be iMovie library or whatever you named it. We're gonna keep it within Big Island. That just saves it to the library that you're creating it under. So now we have a whole new movie and you can see up here, it says My Movie 2. Yours might say My Movie 1. It doesn't matter, you can actually name that anything you want. So now, so now you have all of your media and this is called your project line, right down here, okay? Now I know this part gets a little intimidating, so I'm just gonna show you. I have to kind of do it both of my my I, my uh, finger and with the little, what do you call it, the, the mouse. iPhoto and GoPro will automatically put your media in, in chronological order, which is amazing for a video. I like to work chronologically, so most likely yours is gonna be two. So like I said, if you film in consecutive order throughout your day, your videos are all gonna be in order. But regardless, however you want to start your video, you're gonna click on 
whichever video or photo from this section of your media that you want. You can do this multiple ways. You can grab and drag it down to your timeline. Do you see how that did that? That was a two second video. I just dragged it and I dropped it down, okay? You can also click on that little plus sign. You can click on the plus sign and it drops that one. See, now you have a four second video. See, you're already making a video. You can also select a video with your mouse and you can hit the E on your keyboard. You have a four second video. If you hit the play button right here or you hit your space bar and you get your cursor here at the beginning of your timeline and hit play, you have just created your first movie. Mine has volume in each of these different clips. You can increase the volume by dragging it up. See how it says 4%, right? 400% or you can take it all the way down to whatever volume you want. So say you just want like a montage of just the beautiful scenery in Hawaii, because I know we're all fans of Hawaii. And you don't want to have all the sound that's different in each of these clips, right? So you see how my mouse has one arrow here, but when I'm over that sound bar down here, I can get it to have two arrows. Click your mouse, drag it down to zero, and then it has zero volume. If you made a mistake, you can still add that volume right back to whatever level you want, up to 400%. I do find that videos taken from um, the iPhone, the volume doesn't translate very high when you make a movie out of it. So often I have to increase the sound, like if Jason films on his phone when he goes hiking or camping, I usually have to raise the volume. So what I always do is listen to it in whatever normal format I would listen to. Don't have any distracting noises behind you, just turn it on and see if you can hear it. Put it in your headphones, see if you can hear it. Is it too high? Can you not hear it? Turn it down. So that's volume. Very basic, I understand. So at the top of your iMovie bar, across the top of the page here, you've got your volume button here as well. If you have your video selected, you can actually select the volume right from here and you can go down to zero, 30, whatever you want it to be. I'm gonna take it to zero just for what I'm gonna do next. But you can also do other editing of the clip that you have selected. Um, you can crop it, you can do the Ken Burns, which you can do other editing things with this toolbar across the top, okay? Um, there's a whole bunch of things and you can play around with these. There's filters. This one over here changes the, the tone. When I do high pitched tones, that's what this one does here. If you want to change it to black and white, you can select different filters on the um, videos that you have selected. You can also change the speed of a video. Say you want a sunset video and you've propped your camera or your GoPro up and you have time lapsed and you want to speed that all up, you would just select the clip that you want fast forwarded and you click fast and then you can determine how fast you want it. 2%, 4%, 8%, 22% um, and you can increase the speed of that clip um, depending on what you need it to be. Say you have all your clips, you don't know what else to do with it, but you like the look of all of them. I'm going to click on that top one we're gonna go down to like this little set of palm trees here. I'm gonna use the shift key and I have selected a whole bunch of them. You can dump these all at the same time down into your little timeline down here. Again, by clicking E on your keyboard. It's the easiest one. I'm not gonna, you can go to file and do all the other things, but I'm just gonna give you the shortcuts because it's just the easiest thing. So what I'm gonna show you here is we just dumped in all of these videos. These are probably only, I mean, well, it's a four minute video so, so far. So they're short little clips, okay? I'm gonna just go through for safe, for uh, ease of making this quick video. I'm gonna take out ones where I am talking. I don't need to have that in there. I just want, you can leave in ones where you're talking. I'm just gonna show you something really quick. If you didn't have any talking in the video when you created it, so you did it from the past, you don't know what the explanations are, you don't know what your thoughts were, that's just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and select 
the volume on all those videos and I'm gonna turn it to zero. Okay, so there's no sound on any of these videos. Now, I don't know if you've watched any kind of video, but it would be pretty boring to just see a video played out with no sound, right? So you need to add music. Now, I'm just gonna give you a little hint when it comes to music. If you are going to do nothing with this video except for view it yourself, it doesn't matter what music you add to your video. You can go in and select an iTunes song that you happen to have within your iTunes. But if you do anything with this video, if you post it on Instagram, if you post it on TikTok or on Facebook, if you send it to your family member via any other social media outlet, you are going to have it shut down and you're not gonna be able to have it be seen. Those are gonna have copyrights on them. So my advice is don't mess with that unless you're absolutely not going to share it with anyone else. <laughs> Just don't mess around with any kind of copyright music. You can get copyright free music online. I pay for my subscription to get my music. You don't need to do that if you're doing these videos just for yourself. Um, I wouldn't pay for anything at this point. Just use the mu music that iMovie gives you. Just save yourself and I'm gonna show you what to do next. Okay, just for simplicity's sake, we've got a timeline of all the videos that we want. I have chosen to not have any volume in them. So we have media, audio, titles, background, and transitions. You can do a whole bunch of things with all of those things, but you don't have to. So if you want a fun little trick, I have all of my videos selected by doing Command A, or you could just select all of them and highlight them. If you wanna add a cross dissolve transition, it just makes a little blurred transition between every video, hit Command T. Did you see that? It puts a little transition. Let me hit play. Do you see that? It just does a very soft transition. Oh, this is really long. <laughs> Tree clip. This is what you have to do when you go in and edit. We're gonna do that next. Oh, there's my feet. It's just gonna do a soft transfer between each video. Now, the next thing, you can play with this. This is where your creativity has to come into play. I can't walk you through every little thing. You have to just start playing with it and seeing what you want for your own video, okay? So I'm gonna select on my audio and my music. All right, so here is the music that I have available to me to choose from. I don't tend to use this music on this computer anymore because I have downloaded music from the internet and I have learned the hard way that not everything is actually copyright free as I thought it was. So I will just show you a video. Oops, I've got something turning on, hang on. I just downloaded a song to show you. So I'll show you here really quick. I downloaded it from Epidemic Sounds is where I get my music from. I'm gonna add it to my YouTube audio library. I didn't mean to show that part to you, but there you go. So now, I have to find out what that was actually called. I can't remember what that song was actually called. After a while is what the name of that song was. So I'm gonna search for that really quick. After a while. So there is the song that I just downloaded. I have that one selected. You can see the little wave form up here in the little green. So I'm gonna take that song that I selected. I know it's really hard to see on my computer. This is the song I wanted. I'm gonna drag it. See how it created that green timeline? See that down there? It went underneath all the videos. Now, let's play it. I mainly had to make sure I didn't have a copyrighted music because I'm gonna show it to you guys here and it's gonna play in my current video so I can't get a copyright on music. So that's why I did it that way. You can have that music go for any length of your video. You don't have to have it go for the whole thing. So next I'm gonna teach you um, how to edit each one of these little video clips. Maybe yours is going to be one solid video clip and it's gonna be 10 minutes long or it's gonna be two minutes long. If you want to edit any of these portions of your videos or you wanna edit the, the sound that you have, maybe you only wanted to have sound and, and music on the first 10 clips of your, or, of your video. There are a few shortcut keys. If you go up to edit, you're gonna see all of these different commands and you're also gonna see the shortcut key for it. You can either learn the shortcut key or you can always cut up, come up here and just select it from right here. 
like the select all is command A. Um, what I'm going to teach you right now is the cut feature, okay? And it's command X. I do this one on my keyboard all the time. All right, I'm going to try and zoom in on this just so you can see. Now, I think when you watch this little clip of, of, of videos, these were all like basically one second long. And then we got to this one and it's like seven seconds long and it's like, oh, maybe that's too much, right? Like, let's play it here and I'll show you. Right? And then it gets to here and you're like, ah, okay, maybe we don't need to see that much of the tree. Now, that shortcut key was command B. You hit command and then B and it cut it. Okay, it cut right there where I had the little mouse cursor on it and it split that whole clip right in half. So you can either select, you can select any portion of it. I'm gonna delete out the four second portion and leave a two second portion. You can select out whatever you need to, to take out. Um, this is where I get like my music set to the beat um, is where I kind of wait and listen to the music and then cut it on a beat and make it more you know, aesthetic, but you don't have to. So now it kind of flows better. See? For the most part, I'm gonna have to tell you, you gotta fiddle with this, okay? You gotta hit play and you gotta play it through and listen to the music and, and see what kind of vibe you want with your video. You need to listen through all of the parts where you're talking, if you happen to be talking in that part of the video. Listen to the whole thing play through. If you don't like something that you said, or you don't like something that you saw, or there's that little two or three second gap that I talked to you about, like when you start filming a video, you can cut that part out and start fresh right where you wanted to. The reason why I tell you to like film that kind of a, a little gap is to make sure you're actually filming what you want to film and give, your chance to, you give yourself a chance to like take your breath start talking and then you can kind of cut that extra excess out so you have to just kind of play with it from here based on what kind of a video you want just play with it and if you just like to have it film everything that you've currently got you can do so if it's photos that you've got and they're crop the wrong direction you can zoom in on them you can just use all those tools at the top and you can crop them or you can do the Ken Burns and that's where like it zooms in on the photo and then zooms back out. Just play with all of that kind of stuff. Um, you can even add a white background and then add your photo on top of that. Literally, add a white background, stack your photo on top of it. When it comes to the little time bar, play around with it. If you have any questions with that kind of stuff, with like the editing and all of that kind of stuff, I'm not gonna go into every single detail. Either ask me down below or search like YouTube videos that really dive into like certain editing t tactics. But I can answer so many questions that you have down below. I'm just not doing a total techie like video on all the details of every single tool within this video. I just want to give you the basics. Um, but the next thing I want to talk about, and then we'll get to the end where we're gonna and show you, you know, the end result of it and what you can do in order to be able to use it going forward. Um, if you have not filmed a big event, whether it's a wedding or a vacation or grandkids coming over, if you have not filmed yet, let me give you some tips on how to do so. One, remember, turn your camera sideways so that you capture the full length of the video so that you can capture the full screen width when you make your video. The second is, Think about the atmosphere that you're in. Say we're, I don't know, maybe on a trip to Hawaii and you want to remember the palm trees and the flowers and the ocean and the water and the beach and the waves and the sound and the birds and then film that. Even if you're, you don't talk during that. You wanna capture the sound, you wanna capture the waves, you wanna capture the bright flower colors, right? Little two or three second clips that you take in videos are all the things that I just showed you when we played this video, they're all two seconds long. And so if you just capture that little part to your day when you're traveling especially, um, I do it when I'm just doing my daily videos as well, 
But if you just notice the things that you enjoy as you're going about your day, whether you're on vacation or you're at home, those are the things that you can translate into your video that bring the atmosphere to your viewer, right? So if you're on the beach, show them the flowers, show them the sand, show them the waves, and they only have to be two or three second clips. That's also going to save you when you're editing it. You saw for me, I had all these clips. I haven't done anything with them. Those were exactly as I filmed them on my camera. And then I dumped them down into my timeline and I played it with some sound and it worked out just great because how I filmed it made a difference, right? And then it cuts into the part of my day where we're going to see sightseeing or we're going to the beach. If you've captured along the way, throughout your process of traveling, you're gonna capture all of that like background ambiance, if you will, and it's gonna show in your videos. So sometimes people get intimidated and they don't wanna be, like I said, in front of the camera, right? They don't wanna be in front of it. You don't have to be. To capture the true essence of your trip, your vacation, your kids, whatever, film from the perspective of a viewer. What are you seeing? What are you hearing? What do you, you know, obviously smell is not, but maybe you can try and capture the smell, you know? Think of how it's going to look in the end and you're gonna find yourself trying to capture way more. You don't need very much footage when you're doing those kinds of filming. Two or three seconds is all it's gonna take. You're gonna find that you're gonna become addicted to taking those videos and you're gonna wanna create this movie in whatever way for whatever reason that you created it like if it's a vacation or family or kids mine are all home from school right now so they're going to be making noise in the background i apologize that's going to make the video way better and that's why i'm saying you can do this from past videos but you can change your mindset and how you take videos going forward if you think about how you're going to edit it at the end now we're going to show you how to end it Okay, for the sake of this video, it's only 48 seconds long, but you can see right here it says three minutes and 29 seconds from start to finish. Let me scroll over here to the end of my video. And if I scroll right here, this is how you kind of zoom in and zoom out on your timeline. You'll see that my video ended here and I have a little transition right there, but then I have all of this music that I don't need. That's when you go back in with that command B when you're clicking on this music that you've added select the one that you don't want to have and then hit delete here's some more tactics i'm going to lower that sound if you click right here at the end of that clip it does a little arrow and then you slide it and then it does a transition where it softens the music down now i do this over and over and over again but watch your whole video from start to finish in full screen okay so i've got my cursor over here and i've got this button here will give me full screen. Okay, and you're gonna watch it in full screen. Okay, you're gonna wanna make sure everything flows good, right? Now, once you've discovered that you like the entire video that you created, and you're gonna see this little square box with a little arrow pointing out, you're gonna click on that, and it's gonna give you different options. You can post it directly to YouTube or Facebook. I don't tend to do that, but you can. I export it as a file. Click on export file, and then you can save that file. I'm gonna bring up this text box where you can name your video. I call mine Big Island Test Video. And here's the, um, the schematics of the video and file itself. It tells you down here how long it is and how many megabytes it's going to be. And then you click on next. You do want to make sure it's a 1080p and a high quality. Don't change those. Make sure it's a 1080 and a high quality because it's not going to look good if it's not. So next it's going to bring up the save as and where you want it saved to. I have it saving to an external hard drive. You can save it to your desktop. I wouldn't recommend saving a ton to your desktop. I would find an external drive to do this from. If you're going to make more than one or two, it fills up your computer a lot. And then you click on save. Okay, and up in the top right hand corner again is gonna be this little circle. And eventually it's gonna fill in like a little pie and then it'll give you a new little box when it's done. So 
So see that little pie circle there? And it's gonna rotate around until that's completely filled in and then it'll give you the share successful or share fail. Hopefully we have a share successful. Ready, set, almost done. That is what you wanna see, share successful. All right, now I saved it to this external hard drive right here. So I opened that up and you can see right here, that is the Big Island test video. Now, if I opened that up, that is your actual video. Oh, there it goes. Click play. Yay! Okay, that my friends, that's how you make a movie. It's, it's, I know it seems complicated, but it's really not. And you can make it as complicated as you want. You can add and edit and add all the fluff you want to it, but it doesn't have to. It, as long as you've got the videos and you've got photos, just go create it. And if you have any questions, leave them down below because honestly, like these videos that I have of our kids and of our vacations are my all time favorite. I have captured that memory and I've saved it. All you have to do with that file is upload it wherever you wanna upload it. You can share it with your friends, you can share it with your family, you can text it to people, you can put it in your group chats, you can put it on Facebook, as long as you've got the copyright music, okay? It's, it's really fun, you guys. You have a video now. Now you know how to do it. If you have questions down below, you know I will answer them. I will kind of walk you through it if you have any questions. I just wanted you guys to be able to like create your own memories because I love doing it and I'm so glad that I learned how to do it and I just wanna be able to share that talent with you guys. I think you guys enjoy our videos and so I wanted to be able to share that ability for you to be able to share it with others as well. You don't have to become YouTubers, I promise you. <laughs> But I think you're capable of doing it. Even though you guys say you're not very tech savvy, I think you can do this. You can even do it straight from your phone. iMovie is on your phone. You can make this really, really simple and just do it on your phone if you want to. I just think it's easier to edit on my computer. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know down below if you are going to attempt to make your own video. I would love to know that. And also if you have any questions, like I said, do not hesitate at asking me any questions because I will answer them, I promise you. It might take me a little bit if you guys all go crazy and ask me questions, totally fine because I want to help you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and happy editing because I think some of you are going to want to capture your next vacations and I know some of you are going to Hawaii. Some of you might be going to the Caribbean. Some of you might be going to South Carolina. I know where you guys are going because you guys have been telling me. So I want you to capture those vacations in a new way, not just the photos. And also get in the videos because you're gonna be glad that you did. Take care, we'll see you guys next time. Easy, easy on our tiptoes.